Hi guys! Today I will uh, talk about uh, high side driving and in particular I will, I will make uh, a complete back converter because that's the objective uh, of my, that's the aim of uh, <laughs> also of this channel. So let's, uh, so let me explain uh, uh, a brief of theory first. Uh, you know that uh, that the, 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 the drivers starts with uh, a pulse between, the, for instance, 0 and 3.3 uh, volts. Because this signal will come from echo controller. Then you need a level shifter, as I told you also in the low side video. And this will shift, uh, this is an inverting level shifter, by the way. And this will shift between, uh, for instance, 15 volts and 0. Then you need, to, you need to connect this to the push-pull amplifier because this will give, uh, if you plot the current IG, this will basically give uh, one amp as uh, one amp, two amp, whatever, you, whatever the MOSFET needs here. To charge the gate charge, I will show you. Uh, to, uh, I will show it later. Uh, now that now, now that you need the high side driver, the problem is that uh, the source is floating, so it is not connected to ground, because in the low side, the MOSFET here is connected to ground, and so you can even connect the driver like that. But now in the high side configuration, you have the source which is floating. And so you have to you have to provide a capacitor, which we will call a bootstrap capacitor, which is connected to the source. This is called the CBS. Let's use also a charge pump. And this CBS will provide the necessary source voltage in order to turn on the MOSFET in both uh, in um, in both the periods because if if you don't if you do not put this uh, uh, this booter, this bootstrap capacitor the MOSFET has a, flo a floating source and the, the VGS cannot be higher than the threshold voltage i will show you how it is done in LT spice a practical implementation so let's start with the pulse. You know that you need the duty cycle, let's put 0 0.5 and the switching frequency, let's put 100 kilohertz. Let's define the pulse between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts with a rise of 10 nano and T on of uh, D over FS. And the period as 1 over fs. Now you need a level shifter. You can use a common gate level shifter, which is faster, or an, un uh, an inverting level shifter. Since the frequency is 100 kHz, an uninverting level shifter with a MOSFET should be enough. Let's choose a MOSFET with uh, a low gate driver so that uh, we have uh, so that it is faster in comparison with a higher gate charge. And now let's put also the, the um, charge pump circuit, which is done basically by a uh, DC and by a, by a diode. Let's put also Uh, um, a resistor here, which has to be minimized, and let's put uh, also our amplifi amplification stage, PMP. Remember to rotate the PMP because the emitter of the two of the two transistor have to watch each other, have to see each other. 
And so let's connect it like this. Let's it, let's connect also this to that. Okay, now it's the time for the bootstrap capacitor to shine. So let's put uh, another MOSFET. Let's call it a MOS. This will be is RG with one. And you have to place the bootstrap capacitor here. Let's call it CBS and let's put it to 100 nano, which is a reasonable value for the CBS. There are a tons of paper, a rule of thumb, CBS must be higher than 10 times the CGS. So if you put 100 nano, most of the times we are safe and uh, this will be also a quite small capacitor, so it, you, you don't have to, to care about uh, dimensions. Uh, but by the way, you can find a lot of, of application notes uh, which uh, basically states uh, how to design the CBS. I, I, I also make a video about that. So now uh, let's put uh, uh, an input, the, the input voltage, like for instance 50 volts. And let's f first put an ohmic load and let's see what happens with one ohm. So let's run for, let's skip the transient. So let's skip one milli and stop time 1.1 milli. We start from the pulse. This is the pulse which I, I'm going to give. Now, in this at, at this node here, I should expect uh, that the level shifter will be inverting this pulse and uh, also uh, rising up to the voltage of the charge pump. So yeah, as we can see in this node here, let's give me some names. Let's call this node uh, A. So VA, let's call this node B. Let's call this node S. And let's call this node G. So as you can see, this is the input voltage and this is VA, which is inverted and also translated to the, to the higher level provided by the charge pump. Now let's see the voltage between the B and S. As you can see, there is a, a, little, a, li a little bit of ripple. You can, uh, uh, by the way, this ripple is already optimized. So if you put a, a lower CBS, like 10 nano, this ripple will be even lower, sorry, even higher. And you don't want so much ripple across the bootstrap capacitor. For, for, this, for this reason, the most of the most values employed is 10, 100 nano. If you see the gate between the, the voltage between the gate and source, you're gonna see that you're gonna, you, you, you will provide a voltage between zero and more or less 10 volts. If you add the external capacitor just to simulate the effect, two to two nano, nothing will happen. But anyway, if you see the power dissipation of the MOSFET, as you can see, this is the Conduct, this is the switching losses, uh, because here the current is uh, uh, if you okay now now if you see that if you make the product between uh, if you make the product the product between VS and ES, let's add the this trace so uh, VS times Yes, or M2, you're gonna have here a spike, which is also regarded as this, which is the power dissipation of the MOSFET. Uh, so now, instead of an ohmic load, uh, let's see also let, let's see also the the current which is going inside the 
uh, inside the MOSFET. You see also, all, all, you see that all these spikes, so these are not a, this is not a bug, it is basically the current which is providing the, the driver in order to charge the gate charge of the MOSFET. And this will change the, naturally based on the MOSFET. So if I put an, another MOSFET which has a lower gate, a higher gate charge, for instance this, uh, the pulse will be even higher. Or at least will be different. So, I, as you can see, the pulse is higher because the gate charge has increased and I'm going to provide more gate charge in order to turn on this MOSFET. Now, let's put a, a, a back converter as a test. So, let me put the diode, 22 micro, and also the capacitor, 22 micro. 100 micro and load all one ohm okay so it is 50 volts and the duty cycle is, is, is set to be 0 0.5 so you should expect that the the output voltage if everything is working correctly the output voltage should be more or less the half of the input voltage so 25 volt let's see if it is true yes we see uh, 25 uh, I, I think that we should prolong the, the transient so 2m 2.2m that's because I put a very high capacitor but by the way let's prolong it a, a little bit so as you can see the ripple is uh, quite low since I put a, a high capacitor the inductor is very stressed, so let's rise it a bit. 44 micro. And the output voltage is very near to uh, the half of the input voltage. That's basically, it is not exactly the half, that's basically because the, the gate, the, the VGS, is not exactly 0 0.5. There is a, a, little, a, a little bit of delay. I think that there is a little, a little very, very bit, uh, yes, here. And it is basically owing to the, the Miller voltage, because here you have, you have the, the capacitor is basically going to be Millered, and so you have a very high capacitance that you have to achieve. If you put, if, if, we, if we put a, um, for instance, this, this plateau, this plateau period should be minimized. Uh, you're gonna still have the plateau period because, <laughs> of course, uh, you have to. Uh, but let's let's uh, um, destroy this capacitor because you you don't need this capacitor here. Uh, well, nothing has changed. But by the way, <laughs> let me check just this two waveform. Okay, this quite. Yeah, it's always always twenty four volts. So of course it depends on on which you're choosing. And now, instead of the diode, instead of the diode, now uh, let's put another MOSFET. Let's put the same. Uh, yeah, let's put the same. So also, this diode will require, of course, uh, see uh, a low side, a low side level shifter. Uh, I have already made a low side level shifter, so I will just basically copy it, because this is already optimized. Uh, as you can see, the two drivers are very very similar. The only difference is that here you need the, the charge pump and the bootstrap capacitor. This low side driver I, I taken from another of my, of my videos. But anyway, here you will need the same pulse as here, but inverted. So let's merge the two. So this is the same voltage. Okay, 
And uh, it is also the same pulse, but since this is, this is a synchronous configuration, you have to put the complementary pulse. So you can do it with uh, the inverter, or you can do it with uh, basically another pulse, but uh, with a translation of D over FS. And uh, a home period of 1 minus D over FS. So let's check the two waveform. They should be complementary. Oops. Ah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is a okay. The this is a, a, an inverted level shifter, by the way. Uh, okay. So uh, accidentally, I put the same. Uh, Accidentally, I put the same waveform. Sorry, this is uh, my bad. Okay, now it is a synchronous configuration. Let's see also if in the gate driver there is this synchronous configuration here, it, it, because it should. Okay, the voltage is not synchronous. So this is what, what is really happening in, in a real driver. There is still a, some that... No, there isn't. So there is not the time. So you can see some... Yes. When it, whenever you don't put the, the time... Uh, as you can see, if you don't put the, the time, huge spikes will come across the... Huge spikes uh, will come across uh, because, uh, of course, uh, you need to put the time, otherwise uh, there will be a short. And since there is a short, uh, kiloamps are, going, uh, are flowing to, from this generator. Let's see the output voltage. Okay, the output voltage is quite reasonable we should expect something very near to 25 volts as a, a okay it is a, okay it is performing even better than before before we had 24.5 now we have 24.85 which is very very good we are very near to the 25 volts and um, so so now what we what we can adjust here is to increase is to avoid these these spikes here but i think that uh, for today, it is enough. We put the low side driver, the high side driver, and the back converter. So the circuit is basically complete. So this is the high side driver. And this is the low side driver now you can even close the loop which is not so which which will take time but uh, I can I, I could even take uh, uh, the type 3 compensator which I stored here and uh, put it in, in the video to close the loop but uh, I I will do it another time so for now this is an open loop back converter with the drivers and if you realize this circuit, it's probably gonna work, not in the most opt optimized way, because you still need the analog electronics to do it, so... Now let's check also the all the waveform. This is the... Hey, as you can see, there are some spikes, but let's, uh, ignore, uh, let's ignore that. 
Oh, by the way, this is inverted as always. Always take the source. Now let's take also this current here. Let's put a, again, let's put a minus. Okay, as you can see, the two, the, the two switches uh, are composing the inductor current. So now if I overlap the, the inductor current here, you will see... Oh my god. Why it is always the opposite? Okay, this is a good reason to put that at that time in, in, the, in the circuit, by the way, because uh, you, you, you will always have to zoom in and out, in and out. Oh, so as you can see, the inductor current, of course, is the gray waveform, and it is a, a triangular waveform as you expect. And these are the two waveforms of the synchronous. Now, other waveform in which you might be interested on, it is the current flowing into here, which is the, the same as the inductor, but without... <coughs> but without the, without the DC component. And another waveform in which you might be interested... Uh, no, there are all the waveforms. So let's also put the output voltage, but as you, as, you may, as you may know, it is 25 volts. Ah, by the way, we are still in the transient, but... Uh, Okay, so this is the real and complete pack converter. I'm quite proud of this. Thank you for your attention, guys. I hope to see you in the next video. This was a very special video for me because I have 100 subscribers. And I really want to thank you a lot for following me all these days. Thank you, guys, and sorry for the long video. Bye-bye.